Hello there. The World Championship match between Vishwanathan Anand and Boris Gelfand came to an end today. The tie breaks took place. And I'm very pleased to say that a decision was reached after the four 25 minute rapid games. They didn't have to resort to blitz games to decide the championship. So I'd like to take a look at all four games and I'm going to focus in on a few key moments. So I'm going to devote one clip to each game. So here we go. I'm going to plunge straight into game one. Gelfand has the white pieces, Anand has the black pieces. And we join the game after 19 moves. Gelfand has just played his pawn to a4. Now I'm not sure about that move. I think that seems to allow um, Anand a very good chance. Um, he played queen f3. I should say that Anand was playing right from the word go, very quickly, very fluently. And already in this game he had something like a 10 minute time advantage over Gelfand. Now queen f3 is a very strong move. What black would like to do is play bishop h3. That would threaten a mate here of course. And when the bishop moves to defend that, either e4 or f1, then the queen swoops across to take on b3. There's a lot of a lot of paint on the board, let me take that away. So you can see why a4 is probably weak, because it actually leaves the b3 pawn vulnerable. So Gelfand played bishop e4 straight away, Anand took the pawn, and Gelfand played rook b1. Now this is a very tricky position, but it's amazing how quickly Anand played. He could have moved his queen here, but instead he just plunged in straight away with bishop takes g3. Okay, we need to kind of slow down and look at this move carefully. What happens on pawn takes bishop? Then simply rook takes bishop, so that bishop capture unmasked the rook. And, well, black has won a pawn and even white's king looks a bit dubious. What else have we got? We've got... Um, bishop takes pawn is an interesting move because of course that unmasks an attack against the queen but now black has an excellent response bishop h2 and that the queen swoops across and once again the rook comes down to take the bishop and here there's a devastating threat of rook g4 and that's going to be checkmate so after bishop g3, we thought Anand was going to win this game. Suddenly it looked fantastic for black, but the moves came thick and fast. Gelfand responded with rook a3. Now queen c4 is an interesting move, but Anand, and but white's probably still okay, but Anand chose queen b6. We still thought Anand was doing well. Remember, if the bishop is taken, then you can take this bishop here. Gelfand played bishop d4. So again, the black queen is attacked. And now, bishop h2 check, queen check. Now, if the king just moves back, then this is on prees, and well, actually, the, the rook is on prees here. So rook g3 is forced, and suddenly there's a counterattack against g7. Take care. Okay, rook takes bishop, so that restores material balance. Now Gelfand takes on g7. Of course you can't play rook g7 because there's a pin. So bishop g7. But Anand had seen this variation and played king h7 very quickly. So the king appears to be reasonably safe here. White king is kind of a little bit wobbly. There's a pin here. But Gelfand was very short of time indeed. He was down to his last couple of minutes. But he swooped in with rook takes b7. And, well, suddenly the game seemed to have turned. You know, there are all kinds of interesting threats here. Um, you know, if, if black... Well, this is what Vichy played in the end. But if black plays, I don't know, bishop f5 to, to guard this diagonal against the king, then suddenly the rook comes in, rook f7, and the game has swung round completely. Suddenly Gelfand is, is attacking. Anand continued to play quickly, rook g8, and this is actually a very good move indeed. And now Gelfand, short of time, simplified the position. He played queen h6, which 
leads to uh, a drawn endgame. He could have tried queen d3, but probably black can defend with queen f4. But it's very tricky indeed. And then king g2, rook takes. Well, this probably leads to to another drawn position. But you know, if Gelfand had had more time, I think he might have tried this. Oh, there's another tricky move here. Instead of queen h6 or, or um, other moves, white could try a rook takes d7. Of course, if queen takes, then queen h6 is mate. However, there is a very strong riposte. Rook h4, a very use, useful Zwischenschach and Zwischenzug, uh, an in-between move. The king moves and then you can take the rook and of course the rook defends the pawn on h6 so in that way black survives. Okay, let's see what happened in the game. So after rook g8, Gelfand very short of time took on h6 of course Anand captures and rook takes g3 White recaptures, rook to, rook, bishop c8. Okay, so white has to be careful. Rook is on prees and the bishop is on prees, but rook c7 saves. And now we reach a drawn rook and pawn ending. And in this position, they agree to draw. Let me just continue for a couple of moves. For example, if you play rook here, then black could play here. Rook takes, rook takes. Okay. Even if you win a pawn, this is completely equal. This is very simple to defend against just one pawn when the king is in the correct position. So the first game was drawn, but not without interest. A very sharp game indeed that seemed to tilt in Anand's favour, but Gelfand fought back. So, I'll see you for in the next clip for game number two.